Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Still and I will be presenting the combined efforts from the Data Science Unit at the Technical University of Vienna and the Spanish National Research Council in collaboration with Leonardo Campilos Lanos, Wojciech Kusa and Alan Hambury. First of all, I will quickly give you an introduction to our approach and methodologies. In general, we are using pre-trained BERT models as a baseline to be fine-tuned on the provided cardiology data. We devised several strategies to enhance the fine-tuning process, but in the course of my presentation, I only really want to show you our more interesting findings. So we will focus on two of the, of the strategies. So first of all, we come up with a data augmentation technique via an open source data set containing cardiology texts in English, which we automatically translated via the Google Translate API and annotated using a medical lexicon in Spanish, MedLexSP. Furthermore, we tested transfer learning techniques through models which have been trained onto diseases and drugs from the general dom domain by using a corpus of annotated texts about clinical trials in Spanish, the CT-EMB-SP corpus. While training models for this task also devised some research questions we would like to answer in the process. First of all, we would like to see how transfer learning helps when adapting from a general medical domain to a highly specialized medical domain, with cardiology as the given example. Secondly, we will assess how our automated data augmentation approach affects performance. And thirdly, we want to see if we can exploit multilingual overlaps in our case for pharmaceuticals to create highly performance multilingual models. Let's get started by taking a look at our submission. We submitted 20 runs in total and used all kinds of techniques as described earlier to enhance the scores on the development set. We chose the best performing models for a submission. The models showed good scores on the validation data, as you can see with the average for some techniques taken from here. However, we can see a huge drop in performance in the test results. This was the reason why we had to go into a thorough error analysis. And that's our next topic, especially since with the insights we gained from this analysis, we were able to greatly increase the performance. We expected the model to have some problems with data capture, which is why I started to analyze the data thoroughly. Here we can see the number of words we have per patient node in the training dataset. We can see that about 75% of the data has a length of roughly 500 words. When looking into the relative positioning of entities across the nodes, we see that density is clearly left skewed for diseases, while pharmaceuticals are more concentrated in the beginning and the end of the nodes. I want you to keep in mind that during previous training and evaluation, a cutoff strategy was used. This means that all the access tokens were trimmed to fit the model's input size, which was uniformly set at 512. Consequently, we utilized only about 60% of the available training data, which becomes even worse when taken into account that the distribution for pharmaceuticals is a bit right skewed. Looking now at the development set, we can see how the metric scores we obtained earlier were absolutely not representative of the actual performance of the models since less than 25% of the data was effectively fit into the model. This becomes even more apparent when looking into the relative distribution of entities across the nodes, where especially in the end there is a huge peak in entity density. So after realizing this problem, we split the patient nodes into separate sentences via SPACI and fed them into the model separately to increase data capture. With this, we obtained much better results in experiments. And of these experiments with actually representative performance, I want to showcase a select few with which we will answer the research questions we have defined at the beginning. In order to see the effect of transfer learning for the cardiology domain, we trained an MDE BERTA model onto Spanish cardiology pharmaceutical data from scratch and from the checkpoint of already being fine-tuned onto general drugs via the CT and BSP corpus. We also verify this behavior with the Roberta model, which has been fine-tuned onto the same corpus beforehand. We can see that the scratch model is continuously outperformed on the validation data during training. The model fine-tuned on the clinical trial corpus already achieved a high score after only one epoch of training. 
In the end, the transfer learning model beat the non-fine-tuned model by almost 3% in the F1 score. The same can be said for the Roberta model, previously fine-tuned onto annotated clinical trials corpus, which received a good performance after only three epochs of training and beat the former model on the test data slightly. In the end, we can say that adapting a general pharmaceutical model to a specific medical field only takes little effort and little computational time. Next, in order to test our data augmentation approach, we tested by training the Roberta ES clinical trials NER with and without data augmentation. We test this for both tracks. Interestingly, we can see the performance on the validation set slightly drop when using data augmentation. Nonetheless, we obtained quite better results on the test set with a 5% increase in the first track. The, through data augmentation, we also achieved the best results in the second track with an F1 score of 93.06%. In the end, we can say that the outcomes support that this kind of data augmentation helps with performance. But nonetheless, we would need to experiment with more models and test more types of resources, especially since I suspect that there are several factors that may add unnecessary noise. First of all, we labeled the data with Medlex SP, which is suitable for general diseases or drugs. Even though we focused on data from cardiology, we cannot be sure whether all entities are specific to cardiology. Furthermore, after inspecting the data, we found that the automatic machine translation may be problematic. Either some words were, are not translated or new words are created, possibly due to the subwords of neural models. Finally, we would like to see how we can create multilingual models for pharmaceuticals. First of all, I inspected the overlap for entities in English, Spanish and Italian, for which I performed lemmatization and stemming via NLTK and Medlex SP on all the unique entities of the training set. As we can see, a huge portion of entities, 385 in total, are the same in all three languages suggesting a substantial multilingual overlap. To get more sense of what this overlap looks like, we can see that most drug names exhibit only minor variations, mainly due to the suffixes and spelling conventions. In general, this overlap can be largely attributed to the standardized nature of pharmaceutical nomenclature and international non-proprietary names. To put the theory to the test, we concatenated the data from the three languages together for the respective datasets. We then used MD Berta, which has already been fine-tuned on general pharmaceuticals, for training and evaluation. In the end, we found that there was only little performance loss as a trade-off for achieving multilingual entity recognition, showcasing how the model is able to use the multilingual overlaps to its advantage. In conclusion, although we did not achieve good performance in the beginning, our error analysis helped us achieve fine results and answer our research questions. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me via email. For a reference, I've provided you with the submissions GitHub repository through the QR code. Thank you for your attention.